best way I've been able to explain it. Imagine you're in a an, an Irish pub and you got three Irish storytellers. And I'm part Irish, so I can talk about the Irish, you know, and, and uh, um, but they're telling three different stories and you got to listen to each one. So there's the Fed story, the market story, and then there's something called reality, what's actually happening. So the Fed story kind of goes like this. The, the Fed, uh, you know, forecasting what the Fed's going to do is the easiest thing I do. It's because it's not because I have a crystal ball or I'm smarter than anyone else. The Fed actually tells you. All you have to do is listen and believe them. Now, a lot of people don't listen or they listen like, oh, the Fed will never do that. They, they will. They actually mean it. And Jay Powell is probably sick. He's given six speeches, either post FOMC meeting press conferences or like the Brookings Institution speech at the end of November, Jackson Hole, August 26th. He keeps saying the same thing. He says, inflation is job one, period. We're not really worried about anything other than inflation. And we're not going to rest until we get we get it down to 2%. Um, they, uh, and he said, we're going to have a recession. He didn't, he didn't use the R word, but you know, you don't have to be, you don't need a decoder ring to figure that out. He said, uh, unemployment is going to go up. Um, and he, the Jackson Hole speech, he used the word, uh, pain like five times in one paragraph. I've, I've been doing this for 45 years. I've never heard a fed chairman use the word pain. He said, there's going to be a lot of pain. You're going to feel the pain, but the point is he meant it and they've been going down that path. So, so what are they trying to do? They're trying to get to something called the target rate. And you say, hey, Jim, what's the target rate? Well, I don't know what the number is, but neither does Jay Powell. Nobody knows what the number is. But the theory is um, the the target rate is the rate at which rates are high enough that inflation comes down on its own without further rate hikes. That's the definition. So what's that number? And I... Um, the Fed thinks it's five and a quarter. The market somehow thinks it's like four and three quarters, which we just got to, or maybe five, but it, it's it's most likely five and a quarter, possibly higher, but I'll, I'll settle on five and a quarter. Um, the Fed's not there yet. They're going to have to raise another 25 basis points in March, uh, March 22nd. That's next FOMC. And again, in early May, that those two additional 25 basis point rate hikes, in addition to what we've just seen, We'll get you to five and a quarter. Um, and then from there, you, you go to the pause, and they use the word pause. And Powell's like, that could last a year. And maybe, maybe early mid 2024, we're looking at rate rate cuts. But we've, you yeah, know, we've got to get we've got to get inflation under control. And it's not. I mean, inflation has come down a lot. You know, if you just it, it started dropping like a stone in in uh, sorry, July. Um, now I'm talking about CPI. The Fed uses, you know, it can't be that simple with the Fed. They use PCE, personal consumption expenditure, core, meaning throw out food and fuel. Most people are like, what? That's what I spend most of my money on. But anyway, the Fed, that's how the Fed does it. I always say you have to, if you want to understand the Fed, you can't use your mode. You have to put yourself in their minds or you're just going to get it wrong. So PCE core comes up monthly, but they do a year over year comparison. And that's, that's what they want to make two percent, but um, but just using CPI, which is better known, has come from you know round numbers again nine, eight point seven, eight point two, seven point five, seven point one, and now it's down, you know, around six or high sixes. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot. But you're still pretty far away from two. So nice job so far, but you're not where you want to be. And the Fed said they're not going to rest until they get there. Um, now here's the Fed's, I hate to use the word conundrum, but sometimes it applies. Um, here's the Fed's conundrum. They're raising rates and inflation is coming down. That's clear. But what they don't know is are, is, are interest rates coming down because they're raising rates or have they already hit the terminal rate and it's coming down on its own and they just don't know it. And that's a big deal because if they're at the terminal rate and they just don't know it, and they keep tightening, which they are, they are going to over tighten, probably already have. And this is going to be part of what throws the economy into a severe recession. So uh, so that's that's kind of what the Fed's doing and, and how they think about it. Now, let's go to our next Irish story tower. This is the market. And in particular, although here we had probably a distinction between the stock market and the bond market. Bond market's a lot smarter. But the, the stock market is saying, uh, yeah, the Fed's raising rates, inflation is coming down, but we think they're already at the terminal rate. 
But not only that, we think they're going to get the memo that that the Fed will figure that out uh, before they get to five and a quarter, before they raise rates in May, maybe even March, you know, maybe they're done. Um, and because of a recession, the Fed will get the wake up call, uh, pivot, the famous word pivot, meaning cut rates. And that will bring the economy in for a soft landing. So this is the soft landing Cinderella or sorry, Goldilocks, wrong, wrong uh, fairy tale. Uh, this is the soft landing Goldilocks scenario where the market's right, the Fed's wrong, but the Fed will realize that the market's actually right and cut rates, you know, and if you're going to cut rates, buy stocks. That's like Wall, Wall Street always ends every analysis with buy stocks. Yeah. The bond market is telling a completely different story, by the way. And, and this is a little more esoteric, uh, but uh, if you look at um, yield curves, look at the treasury yield curve, euro dollar futures yield curve, German bonds yield curve, uh, and then, I mean, there's a million yield curves. I pick your maturity, but um, even uh, there's a, you can look at the spread between three month treasury bill rates and the expected three month treasury bill rate 18 months forward. I mean, that's a little esoteric, but you can, you can call that up. They're all inverted. They're all inverted. Now, inversions happen, just meaning the longer term rate is lower than the short term rate. Now, this is in the treasury yield curve. They're inverted from one month to 20 years. It's not like, you know, people talk twos and fives and fives and tens. And say, one month, one, a one month bill is yielding more than a 20 year note. Okay. That's inverted across the entire yield curve. Um, Euro dollar future, same thing. The inversion kicks in. Uh, it doesn't kick in immediately because the Fed does control very short term rates and they're raising them, but the kink kicks in. Um, like in March, uh, March 2023, which isn't that far away. Um, and bunds have never been averted. They are now. Um, even the inversions that have happened in the past, which are rare, uh, have not been as steeply inverted as they are now. We're seeing something globally we've never seen before. And it is the best single indicator of a recession. The last time we saw anything like this was uh, 2007, uh, just ahead of the 2008 financial catastrophe. So the stock market's saying it's all good. Goldilocks, soft landing, Fed's going to get the memo. They're going to cut rates, the pivot and buy stocks. The bond market is saying, no, this is bad and it's going to get worse. And it's actually too late for the Fed to do anything about it. See, when these inversions start, sometimes they're a year forward. Like, hey, look out, look at the euro dollar futures yield curve a year from now, man, that thing is inverted. But what happens is, as you get closer to the actual thing you're worried about, the inversion gets nearer and nearer. Now it is literally a month away or or, or less. So, uh, so that's like a that's like a you know a big red siren, a flashing light, whatever you want to call it. 